About 30 minutes south of Cleveland, Ohio, is a river called the Cuyahoga River that spans 84.9 miles and reaches 60 to 125 feet deep before emptying out into Lake Erie. The Cuyahoga is known for many things, but it's most notable for being the site of a mythical fire. I say mythical because there were a lot of myths surrounding what happened on the day of the fire and why. What is clear though, is that this fire sparked the environmental movement in the United States. As we go through the story, we'll uncover the truth to these myths. Abused and misused by man and his machines. It was oil, there was pickle liquor, it was flowing orange. It was almost an alien environment. Fuel makers, chemical firms, paint companies, and shippers were all dumping waste. Another fire, and the Cuyahoga became an overnight sensation. The noise was deafening, the air was choking. We are in a crisis of survival. In 1969, the Cuyahoga River caught fire. But this wasn't the first time. In fact, the river caught fire nine times before, but it wasn't until 1969 that anyone cared. Why? The Cuyahoga River has a special history. It's one of the last river glaciers to be seen in the US. The Cuyahoga River was formed around 13,000 years ago. Cuyahoga, named by the Native Americans, means crooked river and it was a life source for them as early as 200 BCE. The river was a source of food, water, and transportation. The Native Americans would canoe along the river where plants and fish were in abundance. That changed drastically when European settlers came in the 17th century in search of beaver, muskrat, otter, and other lucrative animal fur. Thus began the river's transition from sanctuary to smokestack. By the way, if you're wondering how in the world did a river catch on fire? Spoiler alert, it didn't. That is myth number one. The river didn't catch on fire. It was what was on top of the river that caught fire, which is pollution. Sludge could literally be scooped by hand. But the pollution didn't just happen in 1969. In fact, pollution started happening a lot earlier, 170 years earlier, back in the 1880s. The rise of cities, factories, and increasing population made Cuyahoga a continuous dumping ground for raw sewage, gasoline, oil, chemicals, paint, and metals. A Czech immigrant in the 1800s, Franciak Vicek, remembered the river as, quote, yellowish black rings of oil circling around the top like grease in soup. The river was dirty, neglected, and it reeked. I was disappointed by this view of an American river. The water gurgled with oil, and sometimes dead rats would float by, bloated beyond recognition, like the river was some bubbling cauldron of death. It wasn't a secret how grossly polluted Cuyahoga River was, but no one did anything because the pollution came about as a result of thriving industry, and thriving industry meant jobs, which meant money. So it didn't come as a shock on Sunday, June 22nd, 1969, when an oil slick on top of the Cuyahoga River caught fire. The amount of oil in the river was so immense that the river was dead, meaning there was no oxygen in the river. With no oxygen in the river, it was impossible for anything living to try and grow in it. But to compare to past fires on the river, this one wasn't so intense. Some flames went five stories high, but overall, the fire lasted about 30 minutes and was extinguished by a city fireboat. Damages totaled $50,000 and captured surprisingly little press. So little press, in fact, that the photo that pops up in Google to this day when you search 1969 Cuyahoga River Fire isn't even an image from the 1969 fire. The photo that you'll see is from the 1952 Cuyahoga River Fire. Either no one cared to take a photo, or what's probably more likely, the fire ended so quickly that no one had a chance to capture a photo on that day. But as I mentioned earlier, the poisoning of the river happened long before 1969. In 1922, the Water Department of Cleveland were requested to test the water after locals said that the water tasted like carbolic acid. The results were conclusive. The water was heavily polluted, but nothing was done. Why? There was a strange pride associated with the Cuyahoga River being polluted. It was a symbol of economic prosperity that the industry brought to Ohio. Cleveland has the lake 
And that's one of the main reasons it has the big industry it has. And industry is what makes Cleveland move. The 1969 Cuyahoga River fire was shaping up to have a similar outcome of no reaction. But then, voters passed a $100 million bond program to clean up the river and improve the sewage system so it wouldn't further pollute the lake. Cleveland's first African-American mayor, Carl Stokes, worked alongside his brother Lewis to push Congress to have more environmental regulations. And it worked. As a result, the 1969 Cuyahoga River Fire directly led to the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, and the Clean Water Act. But why the sudden change of heart? The Cuyahoga caught fire many times before this with more fatal consequences than in 1969. The river caught fire in 1868, 1883, 1887, 1912, 1922, 1936, 1941, 1948, and 1952. So why the sudden change of heart after a comparatively short-lived fire with minimal damages? The answer lies in the year itself, 1969. Two very important events happened in 1969. We went to the moon and Chappaquiddick. The moon landing is pretty self-explanatory. Chappaquiddick may require more explanation. Chappaquiddick is a tiny sliver of an island near Martha's Vineyard. And on July 18, 1969, 28-year-old Mary Jo Kopechny attended a party hosted by Edward Ted Kennedy, along with five of her friends for the 1968 presidential campaign for Senator Robert F. Kennedy. What should have been an enjoyable night quickly turned into a nightmare. Teddy Kennedy was in a car accident that caused his car to flip over on a small bridge and upside down into the water below. Ted Kennedy survived, but unfortunately his passenger didn't. His passenger was 28-year-old Mary Jo Kopechny. 10 hours would pass before Ted Kennedy reported the incident to the police. It was a story that made national and global headlines and soon became a black mark on the Kennedys. What happened? Why didn't Ted Kennedy call for help immediately? Why was Mary Jo's body left in the water for nine hours? We never got the answers to those questions because two days later, Apollo 11 landed on the moon. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Even the tragic and somewhat scandalous car crash of Teddy Kennedy was overshadowed by Buzz Aldrich and Neil Armstrong taking their first steps on the moon. How did these two massive U.S. events help shed light on this little old river fire that happened in Ohio? At this point, it's the end of July. 39 days have now passed since the river fire at Cuyahoga. But eventually, Time Magazine caught wind of not only the 1969 fire, but the multiple fires that preceded it. So in the August 1st, 1969 issue, Time ran an article about the 1969 river fire showcasing a photo of the 1952 river fire. The cover photo of this Time Magazine was Teddy Kennedy in his neck brace as the main story of this issue was covering the Chappaquiddick incident and it was also featuring a follow-up of the Apollo moon landing. So practically the entire country was reading this particular issue of Time magazine. It was a perfect combination of events that unfolded together in a span of three weeks. And this is what many say directly led to the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, and the Clean Water Act. And in January 1970, under President Nixon, Congress established the EPA, creating the first federal bureau that oversees pollution regulation. And four months later, in April, a thousand students marched down to the Cuyahoga River for the very first Earth Day. The nation was finally privy to the harsh reality and consequence that industrial pollution has on our planet. And the Cuyahoga River was a symbol for that change. But before we end, I want to circle back to Mayor Carl Stokes. Although Time Magazine certainly helped the 1969 fire gain national attention, it was the boots on the ground advocacy by Carl Stokes and his brother Lewis that helped push the passage of the Federal Clean Water Act of 1972. Mayor Carl Stokes was deeply involved in the issue and held a press conference at the site of the fire the next day and testified before Congress urging federal intervention to curb pollution. The Clean Water Act regulated the chemistry of the water. The Cuyahoga River had to be clean enough to support aquatic life again, and for Bay Sewage from being dumped into the river. Today, the Cuyahoga River is no longer a dump site. 
It's a place where you can go fishing, kayaking, and stand up paddleboarding. So this Earth Day, let's remember the event that started it all, the Cuyahoga River fires, and continue the work to heal our planet. If you like this video and you want more of it, go ahead and follow my socials that I've linked below where I post mini science content videos pretty much on a daily basis. Or if you like this content and want to hear an audio version of it, I also host a weekly science podcast called The Deadly Dose. But until then, I will see you in two weeks for my next video. Thanks for watching.